analysts are Jeff Bardos of Speritus Capital Partners. He's the founder of, of that firm. Bob Gribick of White Oak Commercial Finance, of which he is president and CEO. Patrick Siegfried, who is assistant general counsel of Rapid Advance. He's also the creator and proprietor of something called the Usury Law Blog, which is a very, I'm a big fan. And again, I'm Jonathan Friedland. I'm an attorney. I'm with the law firm of Sugar, Felsenthal, Grace, and Hammer. So um, that's all we're going to say about ourselves, because you're not attending this webinar to hear infomercials about us. Um, if, if and when, when you're duly impressed, you can look at slides 43 through 46 and you can see our bios and all their glory. No, my panelists don't know who's getting what question when. Um, they haven't seen the question, so I'm going to give them a little heads up. Jeff, this is your heads up, and here's my question. I was watching Shark Tank recently. An entrepreneur was pitching the Sharks a product that said, that she said Walmart was about to issue a million dollar purchase order on. The entrepreneur doesn't have the $200,000 she needs to fulfill that purchase order. All the sharks said they'd be happy to finance the PO. Is that a real coup for the entrepreneur? Audience, slides 20 to 24, slide 13. What do you say to that, Jeff? Jonathan, that is a good question to start with. And I would say yes for a couple of reasons. One, purchase order finance or PO finance is very well suited for early stage growing companies like this one that don't have the working capital to meet the customer demand. And also purchase order finance, it's difficult to get. And it's because it's not as well known as other forms of asset-based finance, such as accounts receivable or factoring, and because it's riskier, and as a result, it's really offered by fewer lenders. There are two situations that I think of that are perfect for purchase order finance. One is production financing, where a company has to pay for the manufacturing or assembly of their product, like this case, or finished goods financing, where a buyer or supplier has to buy product that's already been made and resell that either domestically or overseas. Those are the two main cases. There are other cases where it's relevant. So oh, wait, so for, let, let's highlight the terms production financing versus finished goods financing. Correct. Okay. Right, so you're thinking about the manufacturing, but also it can be relevant if you're just, say, buying product uh, from China, and there's a timing mismatch between when you need to buy and pay for that product and when you need it paid from your customer. Okay, got it. So the steps, the steps in a typical purchase order finance transaction are the company, the seller or slash borrower receives a purchase order finance from say a retailer like Walmart. The purchase order finance company steps in to pay for the company's cost of manufacturer manufacturing. They're paying the suppliers directly, relieving the company of the cash flow drain. And oftentimes purchase order finance company will pay 100% of the cost of manufacturing. The company then delivers the goods to the buyer, in this case Walmart. Walmart agrees to pay, which generates a receivable. That receivable is assigned to the purchase order finance company. And so Walmart is essentially paying the finance company when they pay. And the finance company takes their fees and pays the company the net amount. This so let me ask you this. Let me yeah. ask you this. So my question is sort of, you know, one, and maybe I'm cynical, but I'm wondering when the Sharks say that, yeah, I'll do your PO financing, is that a risky thing? Is that for, for that for the Shark, or is it very unrisky because, you know, the, the, is the entire, you know, um, underwriting of, of that transaction does the shark merely have to say, well, you know, the customer is Walmart, so that's a, that's a darn good, you know, that's very secure, so it's really not risky for me to write that check, or am I missing something? Well, the big difference between purchase order finance and accounts receivable finance and why purchase order finance is much riskier is because you have not only the credit risk of Walmart, but you have the kind of the execution risk of the customer here being able to actually manufacture this product 
in a timely fashion without delay, without overruns. And so it's, it's a lot risky operationally, and um, which, which differentiates it from accounts receivable. Okay. So just, just from the White Oak viewpoint, you know, we, we do production financing in the context of a whole relationship. And to Jeff's point, if it's an ongoing relationship with Walmart, and the customer, the client, the bar has been doing business with Walmart for several years or a year, and he comes along and says, look, I just got my orders doubled. I need more financing. We will assess the risk and say, you already have a history at Walmart. We know they accept your product. We know the production works. We'll finance that. And I think to, to Jeff's point, to confirm it, if it's just a brand new order, you have a lot of more risk associated with the acceptance of the product by the customer, uh, either because the goods are not delivered on time or they're not what the customer expected. So there's different ways of doing it. Uh, I think if you're already financed by someone, um, you have the option of going to the, your current lender and asking for it essentially an over advance, which, which kind of solves the PO funding problem. In the case that you're talking about, I'm assuming it's a startup and has a brand new product, and PO financing would be per perfectly appropriate for that case. 